Welcome to week one of the Daniel Plan series, 40 Days to a Healthier You. My name is Dee and I'm so privileged to be your host for this series. We're going to be starting out each week with Pastor Rick laying the biblical foundation for our five essential elements of health. We'll be starting with the spiritual side of health, looking at how faith plays a role. Our key theme in the faith week is that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The next week, we'll be moving on to the subject of food and learning how we can love foods that actually love us back and give us energy and vitality into our lives. Then we'll look at fitness from a fresh approach, just trying to find movement that we can actually enjoy. Then we'll move on to the concept of focus with Romans 12 too, that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is such a powerful, powerful principle. And then we'll be moving on to friends, how ultimately we call the secret sauce of the Daniel Plan is doing all of this in the context of community, for we have found that we are so much better together. One of the neatest parts of our series is it's super practical, motivational, and inspirational because we've brought in wellness experts, our founding doctors, our chefs, our fitness experts to give practical motivational tips throughout the series. So not only in written form in your curriculum, but on this video series with tips on our website, we're really here to equip you with the tools and training and inspiration that you need to move forward in your own journeys of health. So we're so glad that you joined us for week one, our starting week. So sit back, enjoy yourselves, and we hope you have a great session with us. Thank you so much. When I first started the Daniel Plan, I was 320 pounds. I say 320 because I actually weighed more, but I was too afraid to get weighed in. In 2010, a surgeon told me that I was gonna have to have a steel rod or some sort of rod put in my back so that I could walk properly and that I would never be pain free. Just prior to the Daniel plan, I did nothing. I did no exercise and I ate what I wanted. And that didn't get me very far. My cholesterol was um, far exceeded what was normal. My triglycerides were close to five, five, uh, 400. My sugar was uh, in the level of being a diabetic. I had an experience in my life uh, where I was, uh, had a lot of rejection and uh, did not feel good about myself, was very down. I'm very much a church goer kind of an in-the-box Christian, not sure, uh, kind of uh, not sure where I was supposed to go. Didn't want to go out, very depressed. I did not see the light at the end of the tunnel. I went back to this concept that God was going to shape me. And I thought, okay, well, what is my shape? I've got this body, I've got this temple. Hmm, if it's not really mine, but it's, I'm a steward of it, I need to do something with it, maybe I should give him a chance. When, when the Daniel plan came along uh, and, the, and the weight loss came along, it dramatically changed the way I viewed my body, the way I view food, the way I view fitness, uh, the way I view why I'm here, God's purpose for my life. Taking a class with the Daniel Plan really gives you that opportunity to be in that Christ-centered environment where you're really focusing on the Lord and at the same time getting healthy and being physical. The faith factor through the Daniel Plan was huge in my own life because that's what motivates me to keep my temple in the right place and be able to serve God with it. The best part for me is my great grandbabies. I can take them to the park. I can play with them. I can actually climb on the park equipment. And with the Lord in my heart, I, um, I'm reaching that goal. I'm pain free and I did not have to have surgery. Hi, I'm Rick Warren, the author of The Purpose Driven Life and pastor at Saddleback Church uh, here in Southern California. And I wanna welcome you to the Daniel Plan. The Daniel Plan is a plan for total health, total fitness. Actually, we call it whole life fitness because it involves far more than just your body. It involves your mind and your spirit and your soul and every part of your life because God didn't just make you a body. Your body is important, but it's not all there is to you. And for you to work in harmony together, you must get all of these elements of your life working together. You know, uh, over the years, I uh, have lost hundreds and hundreds of pounds, but I've managed to find them again <laughs> over and over and over. And so it's been a constant battle. And yet the Bible says life is a battle because everything in the world is broken. Our minds are broken, our bodies are broken, the economy's broken, uh, you know, the weather is broken because sin is in the world. Things don't work as God originally intended for them to work. So what is the Daniel plan? The Daniel plan is a plan that looks at more than just food 
and fitness. It adds three additional components. The component of faith, which is the foundation, the component of friends, which is the context, and the component of focus, which is the direction and purpose. We're going to be talking about these uh, in detail in the next few sessions together. But I first want to talk to those of you who felt discouraged about your health. Uh, maybe you have gone on diet after diet after diet, plan after plan after plan, and you've just felt like, do I even want to try one more time? And the answer I want to say to you is yes. Yes, you do. You know, uh, we started the Daniel Plan at Saddleback Church about two years ago. Uh, the first year, I uh, lost over 50 pounds on that plan. The next year, I gained a lot of it back. Four months ago, we had a uh, serious family tragedy in our home, and uh, it really set me for a loop. And during that time of grief, uh, I wasn't worried about exercise, and I wasn't worried about food, and I, I wasn't, I was just in a slump. And I put back on some weight. But what do you do when uh, you've had failure after failure after failure. Maybe you are a pastor watching this and you think, how can I lead my church in a, in a, a get healthy plan when I'm severely overweight and I, I'm a terrible example? Well, let me begin by first taking you to the Bible and then let me tell you my story. In Romans chapter eight, I think that's probably the greatest chapter in the Bible. It, it gives us six facts that are really encouraging uh, for us uh, to, uh, uh, to keep on keeping on for the things that we know that are right to do. Actually, Romans 8 is a, is a response to Romans chapter 7. And in Romans chapter 7, we find the typical reaction of people when they want to make changes in their life, but just can't seem to do it. Let me read you a little bit of Romans chapter 7. Romans 7 verse 15 says this out of the Living Bible. I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I can't. I do what I don't want to, what I hate. I know perfectly well that what I'm doing is wrong, and my bad conscience proves that I agree with these laws I'm breaking, but I can't seem to help myself, because I'm no longer doing it. It is these desires, this sin inside me that's stronger than I am that makes me do these things. And then down in the next verse 19, he says, no matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. When I want to do good, I don't. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. He says, my new life tells me to do right, but my old nature still inside me loves to do the wrong thing. Oh, what a terrible predicament I am. Who will free me from my slavery to this deadly lower nature? Then he here gives the answer. Thank God it has been done by Christ Jesus our Lord. He has set me free. Then in Romans chapter 8, it gives us six wonderful benefits of walking in God's spirit. The difference between Romans 7 and Romans 8 is the picture of between defeat and victory. In Romans 7, it uses the word I, me, my, 27 times. But in Romans chapter 8, the word spirit is used 18 or 19 times. And that's the difference. Am I doing this on my own or am I doing this by the Spirit of God? What happens when I add to food and fitness the issues of faith and friends which is the family of God, and focus. When we add these three things, we get a picture of Romans chapter 8. And there are six things. I want to just share them with you quickly in this opening introduction. First, the Bible says in verse 1 of chapter 8, so there is now no condemnation awaiting those who belong to Jesus Christ. For the power of the life-giving spirit, and this power is mine through Christ Jesus, has freed me from the vicious cycle of sin and death. All change starts with acceptance. 
until you feel accepted by God, you're going to continue to uh, be caught in a cycle. So you're not motivated for these changes out of guilt. You're not motivated for the changes in the Daniel plan out of pressure. You're not motivated by uh, uh, this sense of fear that God will not accept me unless I reach a certain stage of perfection. The Bible says you're already accepted by God because of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. We begin the Daniel plan not from, I'm gonna prove that I'm worthy, but we begin with, God has already accepted me and my worthiness comes from my relationship to Christ because I'm forgiven and I've been cleansed and I'm living by grace, not by condemnation. That's the first thing. The second thing that we are told that helps us to change is the Spirit of God. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says, Following after the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace, but following our old nature leads to death. In other words, every time I try to do something on my own, I'm going to hit a brick wall. But every time I let God's Spirit work in me and through me, I'm going to find life and peace. My goal for you is that you experience life in its fullness, life and peace, the life the Holy Spirit wants to give you. And of course, you know, if you have more energy, you're going to have more life. And so the Daniel plan starts at the fundamental level of our bodies. It was the Greeks philosophers, the Aristotle and Plato and Socrates, who said that the spirit mattered most and the body didn't really matter. But the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible says that God's spirit lives in your body. In fact, God made your body, Jesus died for your body, and the spirit lives in your body, so he wants you to take care of it. The Bible says in verse 9 of Romans 8, you are controlled by your new nature if you have the Spirit of God living in you. So the key is it must, must be Spirit-empowered. This is the faith factor. It's God-empowered change in your life. The Bible says down in verse 12 of Romans 8, So dear brothers, you have no obligation, whatever, to your old sinful nature. What does that mean? It means God's Spirit says, I will give you the power to say no. So we have no condemnation and we have the Spirit of God. Those are two factors in the Daniel plan. The third thing we have is in verse 24 and 26. It says this, we are saved by trusting and trusting or faith. And trusting means looking forward to getting something we don't yet have. For a man who already has something doesn't need to hope and trust that he'll get it. But if we must keep trusting God for something that hasn't happened yet, it reaches us, it teaches us to wait patiently and confidently. And in the same way, by our faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our daily problems and in our praying. So we do this by faith. We do it by grace, we do it by the Spirit, and we do it by faith. So as we start this series together, you might Pray a little silent thank you prayer. God, thank you for the Daniel plan and thank you that it's gonna be different this time. Thank you that I have your affirmation and no condemnation. Thank you that I have your spirit and thank you that I have the faith factor to trust in you. Now the fourth thing that we know about the Daniel plan is this, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, all that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into his plans. God says, I will work it all for good. You know what that means? Even the relapses, even the failures, even the mistakes, even the setbacks. God said, yeah, you know what? I'll fit that in the plan too. I will do it all for good if you will trust me. So we have now the promise of God's word that he even takes the bad in our life, the difficult things. Some of you are dealing with difficulties that were not of your choosing, were not of your making. You were genetically inclined to a certain way, or you uh, grew up in a family that you didn't choose, that developed certain habits. These are things that are out of our control, but you know what the Bible says? Even the things that are out of control in our life, God can use them for good, in our lives if we'll give him all the pieces. The fifth wonderful factor that we have in the Daniel plan
is Romans 8, verse 31. What can we say to these wonderful things? If God is on our side, who can be against us? And if he did not spare his own son for us, but gave him up for us all, won't he surely also give us everything else? Now, this is a very powerful factor in the Daniel plan. What do we say to these things? Two things here. God is for us. God wants you to succeed in your life. God wants you to be healthy in your life. God wants you to have more energy in your life so that you can serve him and you can glorify God, not just with your spirit, but with your mind and with your body. And because God says, I'm on your side, I'm for you, I'm not against you, I'm plugging for you, I'm pulling for you, I'm saying, go team, you can do it. If God is for us, who can be against us? Then it says, and if God loved you enough to send Jesus to die for you on the cross, won't he love you enough to give you whatever else you need in life? The answer is obvious, yes. God will give you both the will and the power, as Philippians says, to become all he intends for you to be. This is a factor that is not found in any secular fitness or health program. It is the factor of God's power, God's love, uh, and God's grace in our lives. God is for you, and God says, I will give you what you need if you will trust me on a daily basis. Finally, we end the chapter, Romans 8, with verse 38. For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Death can't, life can't, the angels won't, all the powers of hell itself can't keep God's love away. Our fears for today, our worries for tomorrow, or where we, wherever we are, high above the sky and the deepest oceans, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God demonstrated by our Lord Jesus when he died for us. Isn't that a wonderful promise? That is the foundation on which we base everything we do, every change we make, uh, every new habit we develop, is that God's love will never stop. God's love is unceasing. Now, there are many uncertainties in your future, but there's one thing that isn't uncertain, and that is God's love for you. You can be certain of this fact, regardless of what I go through, God will be with me and he will love me. These are the six things on which we can build the Daniel plan for health. And as I said, we use these five words of faith, that's the foundation, and then food and fitness, which are important elements, and we're gonna go into detail on those. And then friends, we get well in community, we get healthy in community, that's the context of our growth. God never intended for you to, to get well on your own, for you to get healthy on your own. It's in community. And finally, we have focus, which is the whole thing we've just talked about here, focusing that there is no condemnation, that God gives us his spirit, that all things work together, that the Holy Spirit is praying for us, that we can have faith and trust God to make changes in our lives, that he's on our side, that he will give us what we need, and that will, nothing will ever separate us from the love of God. Are you ready to get started? This is a whole new plan. God bless you. I hope you had a great time as you were able to hear Pastor Rick dive into the topic of faith. It really is what sets the Daniel Plan apart and is the foundation of our program. And I'm so happy to be joined by Jimmy Pena, our dear friend. He's been with the Daniel Plan since the very beginning. He is a best-selling author. He is the founder of PrayFit.com, and he has ministered to so many of our um, members, our staff, um, to really help make the Daniel Plan true in each of our lives. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Jimmy and his daily devotionals with PrayFit.com really talks about how faith interacts every area of our life, how it interacts our physical fitness, our um, the food choices that we make, and really ultimately how it, it impacts our heart in our, our really in our seeking to honor God. And so that's why we have you here today, Jimmy, to give some practical elements to the faith story that, that Pastor Rick's already laid the foundation to. 
Well, it's so good to be here, and, and I'm so glad, uh, you know, that faith obviously is the foundation of the Daniel Plan because faith is the foundation of everything about our lives, our, our, our homes, our schools, our communities, and yes, our health. Faith is, is not only the, the most powerful tool that God gave us to conquer life's obstacles, it's the reason to conquer life's obstacles. And, and the Bible gives us permission uh, to pursue a healthy, abundant life, and the Daniel Plan is, is, is about that. It is about that. And Pastor Rick likes to really focus on that God gives us the power to change through faith. That there's a lot of self-help books out there, different things that might give us different word and input and, and, and encouragements, but it's really God that, that enables us to change by His power. I'd love you to speak to that. You know, the, a verse that Pastor Rick had talked about often in the Daniel Plan is that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Well, absolutely. You know, God's Word is, is the health book for life. Uh, and the Daniel Plan draws and harnesses God's Word to empower and enable us to, to attack the day, whether it be food or, or, or fitness, and everything we need can be found in God's Word. And, and yes, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, and that includes all things fitness, health, and so it's, it's so empowering. Okay, you said that it, God's Word is the instruction to attack the day. I like to hear that. Let me hear how that kind of plays out in your life, Jimmy, because I know you're such a man of profound faith. You and your wife, Loretta, have an ama amazing walks with God in ministries. Give us a bird's eye view of really how faith intersects your life and your heart. Well, I'll tell you, grace, it's all about grace, really. Our lives, my marriage, uh, our health, it's all about grace. When we steep the day in, in, in grace, then it changes, it changes everything. In fact, grace removes the burden of trying to perfect a body that won't last, and yet grace is the reason to honor it every day that it does. So on a daily basis, spending time in God's Word, making sure that you're on your knees in prayer with your spouse or even alone, uh, you know, making sure that you're that digesting God's Word, because if we're so focused on the physical and, and forgetting about, about God's Word, then, then we're missing the boat. It's, it's, it's not about the mirror. It's about the one we're trying to mirror. And, and so when we find that middle where we're spending time in God's Word at the same time honoring uh, our body in order to serve, our, our health is about service. It's not about the reflection. It's not about the measurements. Those things will happen, but those are just byproducts of obedience. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we take, take our health in, in God's Word and mesh it together, then, then we realize, oh, it's about serving others. It's about doing. What am I able to do because my health is so much better? That's the perspective of the Daniel plan, and that's what we've drawn out of God's Word. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say to all, all right, that, Mr. Go. Pena? Let's go, I tell you. Okay. Okay, so you said it's not about the mirror, it's the one we mirror. Tell me more about that. Yeah, you know, it, it, there are plenty of biblical characters that God has allowed us to watch and view as examples that conquered this life because of their faith. And we can use that as examples if we're trying to conquer our day, whether it be the food or our fitness or our time together or community. That's what we really need to, you know, to focus on. So, listen, it, it, he enables us all of those things. That's, that's the focus of the Daniel Plan, harnessing God's Word, spending time with it every day, and setting the tone for, for an abundant life. Nice. I love the, um, just the picture of you soaking in God's Word, setting the tone for your day. I love that Pastor Rick in the lesson talked about him writing out verses on three by five cards and bringing them up. So whatever it is for you, whatever that next step for faith would be for you to be encouraged by God's Word, music in your car, um, getting up a little early or taking a break at work or with your kids, whatever it is, we just would encourage you as a Daniel Plan team, as the ministry at Saddleback Church, to be able to know that we're behind you in every way as you grow in your walk with God, that you may be encouraged as you set on this journey of improving your health and have him right in the front and center in the middle of it. So thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you have a great, fantastic time in your group as you're able to ponder, set some goals to these things. And thank you again, Jimmy, for joining here and being here with us. It's been great being here. Thank you so much.